Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is for you watching this video. I'm also Mayor Katie Rosenberg with my co-conspirator um, and expert in all things public health, uh, Marathon County Health Officer, Brad Scuderi. How are you? Hi, I'm, I'm doing okay, Katie. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Um, I feel like maybe I should publicly apologize for creating kind of a, a crazy media moment for you um, this week or last week, whenever we're watching this. But yeah, um, we'll talk about that. That will be in my three things list of questions, but I just want to get that out first that I'm sorry I didn't warn you ahead of time. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> posted on Twitter. <laughs> it, it is something I did not expect to come up this week. We are going to be talking about wastewater. Yes. So, okay, know. well, maybe that. Okay, I'm going to switch the my questions around. We're going to just okay. start with this. Okay. Waste, water. So WASA is part, and actually, I dug a little bit more into this. I knew we were part of this um, wastewater monitoring for COVID um, mm -hmm. for the last year. And the Department of Health Services has, like, they reached out to us and asked if we'd participate last year. And I was like, heck yes. Yeah. Super interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then we're also part of a different study, which uses the same kind of testing stuff. So a mm -hmm. couple of things going on here. But what we were seeing, and the reason I tweeted it, was the report um, showed that we kind of had a spike in the number of um, virus DNA is, am I saying this right? Um, in the wastewater, um, when it comes to COVID. Yep. So then you guys all got to have a crash course in all of things, which I'm glad you already knew about it, but yeah, yeah let's talk about this wastewater. Yeah. What are you looking for? What does it tell us? Should we be concerned? All the things. Um, so, uh, okay. So wastewater, um, what they're, what really it, it, what the samples are looking for is COVID-19, which, um, if, even even non symptomatic people that have it, it it's in your it's in your poop, and um, so let's let's you yep it's happening. So um, when it's in you know it what we look for is um, you know they look in in the feces uh, for infection for COVID nineteen the the SARS CoV two, um, and so it really gives us a sense of whether or not um, you know it's in our population and we know it's in our population already. Um, uh, some of what we are dealing with right now is that people aren't getting tested as much as we would mm -hmm. like to get tested. So really, it just confirms what we're already suspecting. And we've already seen through our case numbers go up is that, you know, we are experiencing um, an increase of cases. And the best way to protect yourself, again, I always say this, Katie, is um, to vaccinate um, vaccination, COVID vaccination, yep. um, and then to mask in public and to stay uh, six feet away from other people. Um, so, you know, I know a lot of people uh, in my life have decided that COVID is over and mm -hmm. they are going out and doing stuff regularly. Uh, that is not how I view the world right now, just based on the, how much, how many cases are coming up in our yeah. in the world. Yeah, we're seeing that in the increasing number. It's hard because I felt there was a little bit of a, I don't know, a fairy tale vibe this summer when, you know, after May, we all stopped wearing masks and we were able to, you know, we felt good about being vaccinated. Um, I'm really glad that I didn't sleep at all in July and just enjoyed my life because now we're back. And <laughs> yeah. it's hard though. People want to hug, people want to, and it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we need as many, you know, I think that one of the key ways that we're not going to, we're going to get over this, one of the key ways we're going to get over this is if more people get vaccinated. So yeah. that's why I'm always talking about vaccination. Yeah. Okay, so just a news alert, I saw a press release from the governor that um, the $100 you can get has been extended. Yep. Um, so still, uh, your vaccine, get your $100, uh, spend it on something cool and fun and safe. Yeah. <laughs> So September 19th now, so that's not a bad situation mm, at yep. all, right? It's done. A lot, of, a lot of places are mandating vaccines too. So yes. you know, um, different uh, different healthcare organizations, long-term care. Um, so if you want your vaccine, go to vaccines.gov. Vaccines.gov, okay, mm -hmm. done. And I also saw that like the Grand Theater, for instance, is just having everyone across the board mask um, mm -hmm. at their shows. So you know, a lot of people are just changing forever about how we do things. <laughs> At least yeah. for now. Okay, yeah. so wastewater, we hit it. Uh, we got a lot of it. So now you're on our list. To get all this info about wastewater monitoring, and I'm super excited for you. Yeah, I'm super excited to get it. I've never gotten it before. And when I saw it, I was like, oh man, I want this. <laughs> cool. So uh, next up, 
press release that you sent out this week. Um, again, this is probably last week when we post this video, but yeah. uh, about ivermectin. I never thought that you would have to send out a, um, a press release about not taking um, a stock medication, but here we are. Uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit about this and like, right. I don't know, I'm perplexed. Yeah, ivermectin, it's, uh, you know, some providers do prescribe it for generally for non-COVID reasons. Um, sure. It is not FDA approved for use with COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, but uh, there are a few human applications. Uh, it's also commonly a, a, like a horse medication also. Um, and so um, really, you shouldn't be taking it unless uh, unless under the the advisory of a doctor is what the FDA says. So um, if you're if you and your provider have met and discussed it and decided it's the best treatment for you for um, for non again this would be non COVID related right. reasons. It is not a COVID medication at this time, um, and so uh, the FDA and the CDC clearly came out and said, don't take it for COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So don't take it. Um, I know there are lots of things online, you know, last year was hydroxychloroquine. Um, yeah. so there's a lot of, a lot of rumors and stuff. So I think in general, this is something that I've heard from the health department over and over and, and medical providers, like just don't take medication. That's not prescribed to you. Right. You know, <laughs> we were talking a little bit about this before we started, but like, if you have somebody in your household that has a painkiller prescribed to them, don't take their painkiller, right. <laughs> even if you think it might work. Uh, this is go talk just to your doctor. good advice, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, we do have drop boxes. There's one at the Wausau Police Department where yes. you can um, dispose of unused medications, and um, it's good if you're. It's good to get rid of any medications that you're not using anymore. Any medications that somebody could potentially abuse, um, mm -hmm. you can drop it off at the Wausau PD. Yes. Yes, drop it off there and we will get it safely taken care of. Yep. Okay, so we covered that. Don't take medicine that's not prescribed to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and lastly, you know, a lot of questions um, I did pose to the public, um, what kind of questions people had. And most of the questions right now, because school's back in session this week, are about school. So what kind of advice are you uh, giving to the school districts? What should people know? Um, give me all the deeds. Yeah, Katie, we've been uh, we've been working with all the different school districts, and um, some some have we've been actively working with, some we've been uh, giving them information. Um, and uh, I'm happy to report that uh, there's some schools that are really actively working on collaborative plans with us. So we're yeah. we're happy about that. The the uh, advice we've been giving the schools is like a layered approach. Um, mm -hmm. The safest the safest school would have. Uh, uh, you know, face masks and coverings, uh, three to six feet of physical distance, um, screening, testing, uh, staying at home when you're sick. That's something that we all have to remember, you know, because uh, it won't just be COVID going around, you know, when, whenever we open up schools, it's the, the respiratory bugs. Oh know? my gosh. Tell you what I, when I first started dating uh, my husband, he's a teacher and it was constant sickness for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's, he's exposed to it. things. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That guy's healthy. Healthy as a horse. No, <laughs> don't take ivermectin. <laughs> All right. And then um, also ventilation is important for schools too. Yes. Um, so appropriate ventilation and ventilation systems and meeting outside when you can meet outside. Oh, so asking your teacher if you can have class outside isn't just a way to be distracted. Okay. Yep. I have heard that some of the school districts have changed over their ventilation systems. So they're bringing in way more fresh air than ever before. Yep. Um, so that's really good to hear. Yeah, the school systems that I've been actively working with have been really um, proactive about, you know, they're, they're thinking about testing and incorporating that and, and they're talking about ventilation systems. And of course, they, they did amazing last year on hand hygiene. We're looking for them to continue that hand hygiene practice and cleaning and disinfection they're great at. Um, I think the, the sticking point for some schools are whether or not masking is going to be a part of their school. And some schools, it's really uh, operationally difficult for them to socially distance. So that's, those are ongoing conversations we're going to continue having with schools and, and see what we can do. 
Um, I, I personally, Katie, I have a, I have a child in, in the, in a school district in Marathon County. And so like, I'm very invested <laughs> in making sure that, that, you yeah. know, kids are safe and healthy this school year and totally and staff too. the, the staff. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard from bus drivers. I mean, everybody is kind of doing their part here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been interesting to, to see how this first week is kind of going. And I just hope that we can, we'll keep everyone healthy together. I mean, that's part of, that's, that's the public part of public health, right? So, right. Yeah. And I was really happy to hear that a lot of the school districts, there's a, a, a majority of the staff are actually vaccinated. And so that that actually makes me feel optimistic that, you know, maybe right. the remainder remaining people will see that it's FDA approved at this point and they can get a hundred bucks and that hundred dollars, hundred dollars. And that, you know, the rest of us who have been vaccinated, we've had no ill effects, you know, that we're, you know, we're doing okay. Yeah, totally. So we're running that life. <laughs> Living that life. Trying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think we've gone through more than three questions, but definitely the three things that I wanted to talk about. Thank you, Laura. You're amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. You are also amazing. <laughs>